Hello, hello. I'm a few minutes late today. It's a little after 12. So sorry. Whew, kind of had my head in some other stuff and forgot what time it was. <laughs> uh, so how are you today? I'm going to grab something here. I'm going to grab my Bible. In case I want to pull that out. Uh, it is our Wednesday refresh. And... You know, it's a little bit of time, just take a minute, grab your favorite soft drink or your cup of water, flavored with oils or tea or whatever it is that you need, coffee, to take a minute to just relax and kind of reset your day, maybe reset your week. Um, now, you know, depending on what your week looks like, you may be in a full routine now with school having already started and kind of know what to expect. Or maybe you're like us, we just started school this week. So uh, we're still trying to find our rhythm. <laughs> and like all things, um, stuff gets thrown in the way, you know. So today, instead of doing school this afternoon, I have to go run and try to get a new pair of glasses for a daughter and run another one to the craft store. So she's got stuff for arts, uh, for her art class. And those were not things that I had written in the schedule. But... Uh, homeschooling makes that where it's so flexible that we can do that and they can pick up and do whatever they need to later so that's one of the benefits of having a plan um, is so that you can adjust your plan if you never have a plan if you literally fly by the seat of your pants all the time most of the time that just causes anxiety and stress because you don't know where you're even supposed to be or whether or not the thing you're needing to do is something that's necessary right this minute. So that's why I really encourage you to uh, to create a plan, create a study plan, um, take control of your time, budget it for the Lord. Um, that's one of the you know one of the things that we teach is how to budget your time. How do you break that down? And you can look here on the Facebook page. There's an event where we actually spend an hour teaching you how to do that using a time budget. Um, and I think in the event you should be able to still get the files from that so that you can uh, get a copy of the budget and learn how to budget your time by making intentional choices because that's the heart of diligence is being intentional. So I want to encourage you to do that. Um, Put it down just like you need to be intentional with your money so that you know where it's going and you're in control of it instead of just letting it drive you and it being a burden. Instead, take take control of your time. Um, not in a way of that you're going to make everything go absolutely perfect, but that you are more in control of yourself and you're not being driven about by other people's whims, other people's schedules, and all of that stuff. And I'll tell you, straight up my number one thing about homeschooling i got lots of reasons to homeschool but my number one just for me is i don't want to be bound to anybody else's schedule but my own <laughs> i don't want to have to get up to the school bell and go run to go pick up my kids with the school bell and have my time constrained in the middle of that i want to be able to decide okay now this is a good time to go do what I need to do or maybe I need to do it later and it may be that 2.30 may be the perfect time for me to go do that thing um, and would rather do that instead of having to run and get them from school and that be somewhere else I've got to be. So, hello Mindy. Thank you for being here today. Um, one thing, I just wanted to kind of give you a, a thought today. Um, this whole week, um, it's really Sarah's really been on my mind with Abraham and Sarah and um well really I mean I always think of all these different women of the Bible but Eve always makes me think of and to be encouraged that everybody has to start somewhere you know um even though we should have mothers who are training us every wife and mother is starting in the relationship that she's in from scratch because nobody else has been in that relationship those two people dealing with that exact situation it's new to everybody and Eve makes me re remember that everybody had to start from nothing that they had to learn they had to adapt they had to take on skills they didn't have before they had to be taught those things and they had to figure out how all that works she was the first for everything first woman first wife first mother 
all of those things. Um, she's the first one who had to figure out what to do with her cycle. The first one what to deal with with having children. First one to deal with not getting along with her husband. First one to deal with how do I function in my home for her, which was the garden and being aware of dangers that come in and protecting herself from them, which she failed to do in an instance where she let Satan talk her into eating of the tree that she wasn't supposed to eat. So she was the first. Somebody always has to be the first, but all of us have a proving ground. All of us have a curve that we're going to have to go through, and we need to allow ourselves that and not expect that we're just going to know how to do everything right from the get-go and sometimes even we have to learn over and over again even as we get older because our circumstances change your marriage changes your children grow up and they leave and what you're used to for 20 plus years or however long with all these kids in the house as they start leaving yours it changes and you have to adapt and how to do that and that's not wrong that you have to do that and it's not wrong that it throws you for a loop a little bit so uh, but in particular with Sarah, I want to encourage you in this week to realize that this is a woman that over in 1 Peter, we are told to be daughters of. This is how God describes in 1 Peter 3, this is how he describes a godly woman, is that she is a daughter of Sarah. Um, over in 1 Peter 3, it, in verses 1 through 6, in the same way, you wives, and we always need to remember that if it says in the same way, it's connecting the dots to what was just said before. And what was just talked about before was how Jesus um, was obedient and how Jesus was submissive and how Jesus served. And that's all in the same context of being submissive to government, being submissive to masters, and all of that. So for women, as wives, in the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe your chaste and respectful behavior. Your adornment must not be merely external, braiding the hair, wearing gold jewelry, or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. For in this way, so this is where the comparison comes in, okay? In this way, gentle and quiet spirit, having their adornment be their inner person, not their external person. For in this way, in former times, the holy women also, who hoped in God, used to adorn themselves. So women who trusted in God, who had their hope, and if you go to the book of Hebrews and you look at the whole book, these people of faith in Hebrews 11 who walked out their faith, they were people of faith because they had a hope that they clung to. This was a, something they expected to realize. Okay, So these women of hope used to adorn themselves being submissive to their own husbands. Their submission their willingness to submit themselves to the authority of their husbands was a part of their adornment. Just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you have become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. So this is Sarah that we're supposed to be children of. I think King James, New King James say daughters of. Um, if you do what is right, without being frightened by any fear. Choosing to do what is right. Sarah is given as an example of being one who does this. And she's being, been given as an example of one who is submissive to Abraham. She called him Lord. Not Lord as in God, but Lord as in you have authority over me. The same as you, know, you would give a title to the president, Mr. President, or um, calling someone in your business by Mr. and their last name, acknowledging that they have some authority over you by the way you address them. Um, I think now, I mean, I think calling them sir is, you know, is probably a good, uh, a good equivalent for that. So whenever he speaks, 
he, you know and you show that he has the right to direct you. And it's not in a way of being a doormat. It's a way that you choose to behave. Because we've got to remember, submission is my choice. It's not put on me. Nobody can make me be submissive. I have to choose to submit. And um, we just need to realize that he has authority as far as function goes. Right? Well, Sarah emulated this. This God says, look at Sarah. So that can seem kind of daunting, right? So Sarah was good at being submissive. But what stories are we told about Sarah when we go back to the Old Testament? Um, we're not told what her response is when Abram decides to leave Haran and move to wherever God tells him to go. She just goes with him. We don't know if they argued about it. Um, she just went. We don't have any information either way about that. Um, she just, she went. But when they're so far into their marriage throughout this whole process, 15 years in, 25 years in, from the time that they're given a promise that they're going to have a child, they have all this time that they're waiting. And the stories that were told about Sarah is that she got tired of waiting. And she decided to take things into her own hands. And she didn't do things the way that God told her to do them. She didn't trust God. And she didn't let Abraham lead her. And the issue with Hagar, Abraham didn't lead that. He followed her into that sin, into bringing Hagar into that situation. He, fought, he listened to his wife when he should not have. He should have said, no, God's going to provide us a son. This is not the way to do it. But Sarah decided this was the way to do it, and she made a mistake. And as I like to often remind the young people when I teach them, um, all of the turmoil in the Middle East that we still have today started with that decision from Sarah. Because two nations of people were created from Abraham by that. And you have most of the, you have Israel, and then you have all of these other Arab nations that either came from you have a few of them that are offshoots from Cain and these other um, other sons leading up to that. But most of them, most of the trouble that's constantly warring is Ishmael and Israel. Isn't that interesting? So <laughs> you have all of this trouble. Jacob and Esau still at war today. Having this battle. Um, and so a moment when Sarah didn't trust God to give her what he said he would give her. She makes a decision to try to bring about what God promised. So she decides that she's going to use her handmaiden to carry a child for her, but it will be hers. Well, everything that comes from that is stressful. <laughs> Hagar gets out of her position. She forgets her place. She starts to lord it over Sarah, rubs it in that she can get pregnant, but Sarah can't, which just proved that Sarah was the problem, not Abraham, right, with getting pregnant. Um, all kinds of lovely drama that they had for all those years. And then Ishmael is born. And when he gets to be a preteen and it's and Isaac is born, then he starts giving Isaac trouble. Um, you know, he's the older brother and giving him lots of grief. And then Sarah's got to deal with that. And at that time, Sarah's like, okay, this needs to go away. Isaac's been born. They have their son now. And now God tells Abraham, listen to your wife. Because I'm going to take care of Ishmael, but Ishmael's not the son who's, on, who's being focused on. It's Isaac. And Isaac needs to be in his position rightly, without any contest, without any trouble. And in that time, God tells him to listen to Sarah. Because he's worried about being with his son, Ishmael. Abraham's torn because he's obviously emotionally attached to his son. Um, and God says, listen to Sarah. Well, that's not what happened the first time when Ishmael was conceived. So Sarah had a bad day, and she had some other bad days. <laughs> she didn't react very well. Um, she didn't react very well when Hagar was out of her place, and Sarah wanted to kick her out and send her away. And she wasn't kind because her feelings were hurt, and she was offended that this woman could do what she couldn't do. Sarah had bad days. And yet... She came to be an example that God said, you'd be like her as a wife, 
be like her. That tells me that on most of her days, Sarah was a submissive wife. She listened to Abraham. She brought her problems to him and didn't tell him what to do. She brought them to him and let him lead. We see Abraham as being a very capable leader. He is called on by the other people around him. He's trusted. When there's wars going on, he's a trusted advisor, trusted to participate in these things. He's well known for his righteous behavior. And he is a man that men put their trust in. Well, it just follows that his wife could do the same. So he is someone who is not shy about leading, but he's not aggressive. And she is given to us as an example because she called him Lord. Well, that means that God says you can do this. Sarah did it, even though she had a bad day. <laughs> Don't let your bad days keep you from having the good days. Don't let your bad days become so much of a stress and an anxiety that you don't even know how to start over again and have a good day. Forgiveness with the Lord is immediate when you ask for it. If you have a bad day and you lose it with your kids or you lose it with your husband and you don't act the way that you're supposed to act, you're not in control of his actions. You're in control of your own. When you lose control, ask for forgiveness. God will forgive you. But then you have to act like you've been forgiven. You have to believe that you've been forgiven enough to not continue to act as though you are still carrying that guilt. We have to let that go. If we trust God enough that he actually forgives us, we have to act that way. Don't let those bad days keep you from stepping into a better day tomorrow. We don't know what we get tomorrow. Don't carry the baggage with you into these days unnecessarily. Take each day as it comes do the best you can to the best of your ability ask for forgiveness where you need to and thank the lord for all the blessings in between but take sarah as an example okay all of those things the biggest story that's told about her is really a failure on her part right because the birthing of isaac and all of that that becomes more abraham's story immediately afterwards because when isaac gets older and it's the sacrificing of him and all of that Sarah's part in that is when he's born and then dealing with Ishmael a few years later. And that's really it. The biggest story that she, we are told about her is a failure on her part. And yet, God tells us in Hebrews that she stepped out in faith because she did bear Isaac. She continued to do what needed to be done, even though she didn't think it could happen. She still did what she needed to, to be able to have a baby. She trusted that God would make it happen. And he keeps his promises. She did that. And even though she had a bad day in that realm, she got up and she started doing it again. She started having faith again. And she put her faith in God. And she didn't repeat that mistake again. She put her faith back in him. And we need to remember that. I want to encourage you. Don't be defined by your worst day. Let how you respond to your worst day be what defines you. What are you the rest of the time? And be a daughter of Sarah. And be a woman who is normal, who has ups and downs, but never loses sight that really God's in charge. And when you do forget that, ask for forgiveness, put your faith in him again, and keep moving forward. So I want to encourage you to do that. I can't read all of Sarah's scriptures to lay that out for you because there's there is too much to the book of Genesis. But if you read her story, in Genesis and read every reference to her in the New Testament be encouraged by Sarah and um, she is a testament to us that God understands what we go through he gives us very real women to learn from in Scripture and ladies it shows that we can do this we can do this we can be very aggressive we can be people who respond very quickly to things we can sometimes overreact to things but guess what you can still be someone who's obedient to the Lord those things are not all that you are and uh, let Sarah be an encouragement to you because you are told to be a daughter of her in that way just as we are children of Abraham in our faith we're also be daughters of Sarah in the way that we submit to our husbands and what is what our adornment is um, and all of that so I just want to leave you with that let's see um, <laughs> yeah, Mindy says, never thought um, of it the way you said about the choice she made. Starts all the issues that are still at work. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? 
um, nothing you ever decide to do only impacts you, <laughs> ever. And in her case, it's impacted us forever. So um, Jacob and Esau's decisions impacted us forever, having those separate um, nations. Jacob, um, you know, Esau's people were a nation that was always at, you know, having trouble with Israel down the road. And then again, you know, just having Isaac and Ishmael at the front of that. Um, Isaac and Ishmael started it. Jacob and Esau continued it. And there's this enmity that constantly comes from um, bad decisions. <laughs> so, but yeah, I see hers as being the first one. So, um, because she brought those two nations to be because of the choice that she made. And it really does make a difference. So interesting to see it's one of those things too I don't get too hung up on world peace and looking for it and expecting the Middle East to all you know to all get along and all be happy and they never have so why would they need to now <laughs> they just need to be at peace with the world generally speaking but they don't you know it's really not something that we need to worry too much about just so long you know we just <laughs> we don't want them doing horrible evil things and all of that but to expect all of them to decide that they're brothers and they're going to get along great just seems like a really big ask given that their entire existence has been at war <laughs> so it's an interesting thing so but i want you to go and today be encouraged right take sarah don't look at her as something you can never achieve she's there she's real she had bad days you have bad days but your bad days don't have to be the only thing that defines you God does not define her by that one bad day. He defines her by all the other days where she led a submissive, quiet life, and she did what she was supposed to do. Um, and you can trust that she was a Proverbs 31 woman. She was a woman who served others and did what was hers to do, and brought and she brought honor to her husband, and he could trust her. Just because you have a bad day doesn't mean all those things go away. And we need to not put that burden of guilt on ourselves trying to seek a perfection that has not ever been ours to try to be. God is the one who makes us perfect through Christ. And that will be fully realized at Judgment Day. And we need to stop expecting perfection in ourselves now. It's a burden that we shouldn't be carrying because God is bigger. And we give our, our tough things to him and stop expecting ourselves to be the ones to always just be able to do it. So... That's your Wednesday refresh for today. I appreciate you being here. And I hope that that encourages you. Go explore Sarah. You can go to thediligentwoman.com. There's lots of blog posts about her. You've got the 31 day series that um, has lessons about her. Um, handmade lesson that goes into a lot of the scriptures about her whole life. Um, and then other uh, blog posts there. Just go to thediligentwoman.com and just search Sarah and see what comes up. So. I want you to be encouraged. Find something in Sarah that you can match up with and take encouragement from and have a good day the rest of your day. Lord willing, we'll see you back here Wednesday. And if you're doing our Hebrew study, we will see you here, Lord willing, Sunday evening to go over the last week that we've been doing, or week four that we've been in. So hope to see you then. Thanks for being here.